I wanted to know if AI could build a classic mobile game, so I asked ChatGPT to make Doodle Jump for Android. In this video, I'm going to show you how AI can assist your development like an all-star point guard throwing up lobs for you to finish at the rim. Stay tuned till the end for some of my top tips for coding with ChatGPT. I started by asking ChatGPT about the basic gameplay of Doodle Jump, then I asked it to code a simple version of Doodle Jump for Android using Kotlin, the modern Android development language. I would then ask it a hundred more questions, do a ton of copy and pasting, and here's what happened next. Just a quick reminder to like, comment, and subscribe so that the YouTube algorithm can show us some love. We're a new channel and we really appreciate your support. Thanks. Once upon a time, in a land far away, there was a brilliant game developer named Igor. Igor had a passion for creating games that brought joy and entertainment to people of all ages. He spent countless hours tinkering away on his computer, brainstorming new ideas and perfecting his craft. One day, as he was daydreaming about new game concepts, he stumbled upon an old sketchbook filled with doodles and sketches. Among them, he found a simple drawing of a small, bouncy creature jumping from platform to platform. The idea sparked something within him, and he knew he had to bring this concept to life. With renewed enthusiasm, Igor spent months perfecting his new game. He spent countless hours coding, designing graphics, and tweaking gameplay mechanics. He worked tirelessly, day and night, pouring his heart and soul into his creation. Finally, after many long months, Doodle Jump was born. The game quickly became a sensation, capturing the hearts of millions around the world. Its simple yet addictive gameplay, colorful graphics, and catchy music made it an instant classic. Today, Doodle Jump is a household name, beloved by gamers of all ages. And it all started with a simple sketch in an old notebook, and the determination of a brilliant game developer who had a dream. Some of you may have guessed that ChatGPT told me to say that it's not even a true story, and as a matter of fact, ChatGPT got the name of the developer wrong. So please don't take everything that ChatGPT says as a fact. Do your research. Doodle Jump was released 14 years ago on iOS at a time when the iPhone 3GS was the flagship smartphone, and the Motorola Droid was the popular Android device to have. Iconic mobile games like Doodle Jump, Flappy Bird, Angry Birds, and Fruit Ninja defined the casual mobile game genre. Doodle Jump has had over 250 million installs. It will definitely go down in the mobile game Hall of Fame. Personally, I spent many hours playing this game when it was released in 2010 on Android devices. There's something so satisfying about jumping higher and higher. I think it's really a metaphor for life. Every level you reach can take you higher. At times, there are springs that accelerate your ascent. At other times, there are jobs that are hard to land and opportunities that fall through. Sometimes we all feel like that falling doodler and we think that the game is over but you can always start over i bet you didn't think that dual jump was that deep so we recently coded tetris and python with chat gpt so we do have some experience pair programming with ai check the link in the description if you want to see that video too Our ChatGPT-powered Doodle Jump game has 2D graphics, scrolling gameplay, physics, and sound effects. It's actually a pretty polished mobile game. We coded it in Android Studio using Kotlin, the modern Android programming language that has roots in Java. The vast majority of the code came straight from ChatGPT. I just had to copy and paste, glue it all together, debug, ask ChatGPT questions, then repeat the process till the game was done. 
Okay, so this is our ChatGPT Doodle Jump project in Android Studio. You can see we have two Kotlin files here. We have the game activity and the game view. The game activity is pretty much just straight main activity Android boilerplate code. And then we have our game view, which is the main view for the app. The game view file is about 859 lines of code. You can see here we have this game loop thread, which is responsible for calling game view update and game view draw at 60 frames per second. It's going to provide the Android 2D canvas, which is basically just a screen size bitmap for the game view to draw into. So let's take a look at the draw function. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw the background grid. So we're given this tile here, and we're going to use this for the background pattern. So you can see here we draw across the screen width and the screen height. This is not the most efficient way to do this, but this was a code that ChatGPT gave me. So if the game has not started yet, then we're going to hit this case here, and then we're going to draw the doodle jump text here. We're going to draw the play button and then the doodler. When we actually hit play, the platform manager is going to draw the platforms. So here's the case here. You can see that we have different types of platforms. There's the movement of the doodler, and of course, if he falls, you lose the game. Now let's take a look inside the platform manager and let's see how it lays out those platforms. So in the add platform method, we get a number of platforms that we want to show on the screen at one time. We try to space them out based on some platform gap. And then we randomly select platforms. So we pick a number between 0 and 8 randomly. And if it's a 1, 2, or 3, then we show a breaking platform, moving platform, or a spring platform. Otherwise, we have the generic platform. And again, this is the static platform, the green one. The moving platform is the blue one. It moves left to right. We have the red one, which is a breaking platform that breaks when the doodler steps on it and causes him to fall. And then we have our springs, which multiply the jump force of the doodler. Now, if we wanted to just have a bunch of springs, what we can do is something like this, where we just set everything to be spring platforms, comment this out, and then just redeploy our app. And then now when we hit this, you see that we have a whole bunch of springs. Now, when the doodler jumps and reaches the half point inside the screen, so right about here, you can see that the platforms will start to scroll down. So that creates the scrolling effect. So as the doodler jumps and reaches the halfway point, we'll scroll down all the platforms, and then we'll add more platforms from the top up here. Let's take a look at the doodler update function. So let's see kind of how this jumping mechanic works. So the way that the doodler jumps is that we apply a force in the opposite direction of gravity. So jumping upwards, so the screen space here is 0, 0. So 0, 0 is in this top left corner. So going downwards is the screen height. So we apply a force, basically pixels in the opposite direction, and we jump in that direction. And if there's a spring, we jump with uh, more force. And there's going to be a gravity drag that's going to be applied every single frame to the doodler, causing it to fall. But if it comes in collusion with a platform, it will jump. So let's take a look at that check collision code. So in check collision, you can see here we just compare the hitbox, which is just the bounding rectangle for the play button or for the platform, and the bounding rectangle of the doodler. And if they do collide, then that will cause a jump. It's going to play a sound effect, and we'll have that jump effect. When we tilt the device left or right, the accelerometers will capture that. And if the acceleration passes a certain threshold, then we're going to call doodler move right or move left. And that's going to set the direction of the doodler, which allows it to change which sprite we're using. So if we use the sprite that looks to the left or the one that looks to the right. You know, an important mechanic for doodle jump is the fact that it wraps around. So if you jump over here, it comes across the other side of the screen. So as soon as you hit the width of the screen, it will just wrap back around on the other side. Let's go back to that update function, so doodler.update. OK, so if we go back to doodler.update, we can take a look at what happens when the doodler hits halfway height. So if it's halfway up the screen, you can see here that this case gets hit. And what we do is we apply the force that the doodler is jumping in the opposite direction to the platform manager. And the platform manager is going to apply that to every single platform and cause them to scroll down. So in the example here, you can see as the doodler jumps, when he gets higher, we're going to scroll those platforms down. And then as the doodler jumps, we're going to update the score by that jumping pixel amount. And that's basically how you increase your score. You just keep jumping higher and higher, and the score goes up. And of course, if you fall, the game's over.
Use ChatGPT for what it's good at and work around its weaknesses. Try to avoid wasting time looking up APIs or finding boilerplate code. ChatGPT can provide all that for you. Break your projects into subparts and work on each one separately. AI is really great at summarizing and breaking down complex projects into digestible parts. ChatGPT does currently have limits on code output, so use the continue keyword to get it to finish longer code snippets. If the code snippet has undefined variables and methods, just ask ChatGPT to define the missing code. You have to ask ChatGPT very specific questions and don't assume it remembers the context. Sometimes you have to add your code as context in your question to make sure that ChatGPT knows exactly what you're talking about. Finally, the more that you use AI in your development workflow, the more it's going to improve your productivity as a programmer. So get really friendly with ChatGPT and you won't regret it. Thanks for watching this video. Let me know what you think of AI-assisted programming in the comments. And make sure to remember to like and subscribe. Peace.